Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome to another episode of the Oak Mountain ACOTS. Well, it's mid-December and there's still no snow and that means that we can take this two-wheel drive International 414 tractor to the woods and make some hay. Stick around. So if you watched our last video, you know we tried this last weekend and this tractor wouldn't start. Nothing's changed. It's not gonna start. So I was talking to my dad, Charlie, and uh, he said, you gotta get that fixed because that battery will freeze and break over winter. And I didn't believe him. So I did a little research on the internet and uh, a fully discharged battery at zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit will freeze and break. Now, if they're fully charged, you don't have to worry about it. You can get down to minus 57 degrees Celsius or somewhere around 70, minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, before that same battery will freeze. So uh, I know those batteries have sulfuric acid in them. I wasn't worried about it because of that, but apparently it's a real concern. So we're gonna see if we can get this old girl started up. We're gonna work it this weekend and then hopefully that battery is gonna be good going forward. Let's get at it. All right, so my dad Charlie's here and he's got uh, a handy dandy uh, super starter. Very small unit, but uh, works really well. So I guess we'll have to get that battery exposed and then see how we do, huh? When there's trouble, I'm here on the double. <laughs> we'll get this thing started in the nick of time. Okay, so we got the battery exposed. Karen's gonna come in a little closer and kind of watch what Dad's doing with his supercharger there. I can't get this dirty. My favorite daughter bought this for me because she said she never got me anything I could use and show off. So, she's my only daughter. Thing worked pretty good, didn't it? First time she was pretty good. The second one's a little slow, but boy, from a, a completely dead battery. Minus 10 degrees Celsius, and it's been that way for three weeks probably here now. Yeah, this is a two coat type of day. Two coat type of day. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that'll improve once I get you on the end of a chainsaw. You up for that? Well, I, I'm awful busy this morning. Oh, you are. Oh. I, Okay guys, let's get on this old 414 and run her back to the woods. We've got about a two kilometer trip, so that battery's gonna charge up pretty good on the way back in there. And then uh, we're gonna cut some firewood. Okay guys, so if you watched last week's video, and I'll post that at the end, in case you haven't seen it, you can go back and have a look. We were just trying to pick up a little bit of firewood to get back into the business of getting firewood poles out for the winter. And uh, we had a full load. We stopped at this section of our woods road where there was a coppice growth, and uh, we cut a few more to top out our load, but I had more on the ground than what I could get out of the house, out of the house right? So um, now with the 414 back here with that nice heavy duty carmy winch on the back of it. I'm gonna be able to pull down that one that I had lodged up in the up in another tree. And uh, I'm gonna cut some probably 10, 12 foot sections, winch them right out to the side of the trail. So the next time we have the Kubota B2601 and the Craneman hydraulic timber trailer in here, we're just gonna be able to grab them from the side of the road and get them out to the yard. So um, I had intentions of starting another new woods road uh, for this video. And I'm going to show you some drone shots here in a few minutes of what my plan is to extend this road towards the end of our woodlot. Um, but uh, that's probably going to be tomorrow's work. So at the end of this video, once we get this done, we're going to set up. I'm going to explain what I'm going to do uh, with that new woods road and why I'm doing it. And uh, then you can stay tuned for the next video. So let's get this wood hauled into the back of the 414.
take my ink there. Okay, so if you're watching our channel, you know that we've got one of these cream and hydraulic timber trailers. It's got a hydraulic winch on it. And we have a bunch of different chokers that we use for different applications. Now, I've done a video on this, and we have a Facebook Craneman Owners Group page that, a, that uh, one of our viewers has created. And there was conversation on that page over through the week about how I would hook up multiple trees with one choker. And uh, I tried to explain it on the page, but I thought this would be a good example of how that happens. So, basically, if you have a smaller diameter piece of wood, there's a higher risk that it's going to slip out if you just... If I just try to hook these both up like this, I could lose that on the way to the tractor on a long pull because that's a small piece of wood. It's four inches in diameter. So what we like to do is we actually like to hook the chain or the choker around the small piece. And I've got that, right? And then we'll just simply... I've got four feet of chain left here. We'll wrap it around the next piece, the bigger piece. Put that chain in behind, and it's got that piece of wood. So now it shouldn't it shouldn't come out of there. It'll make it to the tractor. And we've got a small switch. We're only about 15 feet away, but this will work. It'll be a little bit messy because we've got other stems here, but everything's going to come to the tractor. pulled that, that cinched up nice and tight right here. I wanted to show you how that came before I pulled this wood away from the bottom of that stem. So I can get it to the rest of the way of the tractor. Okay guys, I bet we were more than 15 minutes. Nice little bunch of beech and maple hardwood here, right out next to the trail for the craneman to pick up. Now I want to take you back and show you some drone footage on that road we're going to build. Okay guys, so we're going to fly some drone footage, but uh, on this back end of the wood lot, like I've said before, we're two kilometers away from the house. This is the very end of our wood lot here, our 500 acre wood lot, and that's where the, the predominantly we have the most hardwood. So that's why we're always back in here working, because we're doing a firewood business, right? So we are only about 100 meters away from our property line right now. You can see the clear cut uh, on the right hand side of that drone footage. And uh, what I like to do and what I've been working towards is to try and get some sort of a perimeter boundary road all the way around the property. We're far from that, but we continue to work on that. And uh, we're trying to plan it out so that maybe we're 100 meters away from the property line at most. And that way we can do mini spur roads and pull trees from the property line and maintain the whole property, right? So um, this is where all the hardwood is. A couple of years ago, I came in and I cleaned out this little corner here. There was a lot of hardwood and I wanted to get an opening, like a turning chance, if you will. And then I, uh, I put the start of the road up over this little hill with the backhoe. And then I get onto another piece of property and work in different stands of wood and I never come back. But this winter, I would like to be able to get this road put through. Um, the hardwood's not fantastic in here, so there's going to be some firewood that comes out of it. There's going to be a bunch of small stuff that will probably lay underneath uh, the road when we're, when we're building it with the backhoe. Uh, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's not all about the money. Sometimes it's about uh, improving the property, getting those access points in so that you can use that small microforestry equipment. And this is one of those occasions. Okay, let's get at it.
Okay guys, if you're watching this video, you're probably working in the woods a bit and you know that forestry work is not for the faint of heart. I love it because it's physical activity and good exercise for me. I work on a lot laptop through the week. I don't get a lot of exercise, so this is what I do to try and stay healthy. But it doesn't get any easier. So I talked about from a financial perspective that sometimes you're not always out here to make the most money possible. This is a little dab of wood that we've gotten out so far. It's not big firewood. It's four to five inches diameter, but it's good wood. It's beech and it's ash. And uh, some of my customers like wood this size, so that's gonna be okay. But from a financial perspective, when we're putting in these roads, we're trying to cover costs. We're trying to cover the cost of gas and fuel. Um, if we make a little money after that, it's all good. But as long as we're breaking even, the idea here is that we're gonna be able to access acres and acres of hardwood off of this road. And we don't clear cut here, we select cut. We're trying to leave the best, we take the rest. But we're probably only taking 20 to 30% out of our stands when we're thinning because we want a good healthy forest here. So uh, I guess it's uh, pay me now, pay me later sort of a deal. Uh, we'll break even now. But down the road, when we're accessing firewood from the stands, we're gonna make some profit. So I've got some flagging tape here. In the summer, Karen and I came back and we measured off of the property line and I just paced it. I took strides and I figured that every one of my strides was close to a meter long or three feet. And we tried to stay about 100 meters off of that property line down through here. But time flies when you're having fun and that was probably two years ago. And this stuff uh, will lose its color from the sun over time. So. I'm going to freshen that up now because I like to know where I'm going. I don't want to cut my roads too wide because they'll brush back in very quickly. So, uh, so there's a lot of thought that goes into this. At least there is on, on our wood lot. Quite a difference in color over two years. Okay guys, so we've got the, uh, the line freshened up. That's gonna keep us on track when we're in here working away. You can see behind me the semblance of a woods road taking shape. The brush is all laid down. And what I was thinking when I was cutting this was, I'll use this as a winter road. So hopefully we'll get some snow. We'll pack that in with the tracks on the, on the RTV. And then I think I can pull like a skitter tire or a backhoe tire behind me and pack that in nice and hard so we can keep working over the course of the winter. And then next year, uh, in the summertime, I'll bring the backhoe in and I'll stump it and uh, make a nice woods road out of it so that we have access going forward. Anyway guys, like we always say, if you like our videos and you wanna see more of them, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share our videos with your friends and family and help us grow our channel. And on that note, about 90% of the guys that watch this video are not subscribers. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it really helps our small channel grow. So we'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. So to that end, come on back and check on us often, because you never know what the Oak Mountain ACOTs are going to be up to next. We'll see you in the next one, guys.